we want to call this kind of after the message recap. And, and if you have your Bibles, go ahead and turn to Hebrews chapter 10, verse 19. Hebrews chapter 10, verse 19. And I'm going to be reading from the ESV. And we're going to read it. We're going to read a few verses. And I'm, I'm going to um, just kind of unpack this a little bit. This is our main scripture from yesterday. And we were using this scripture in the New Testament to point back to the Old Testament. And in Exodus, when, when Moses was receiving the instructions to build a tabernacle so that God can dwell with his people. And here, here's a powerful, and we believe, a lot of scholars believe the author is actually Paul here, but the author was, was, was connecting the dots. And we, we were going to unpack it a little bit. I'm going to do a little bit of teaching just real quick, but this is going to lead into our time just to, um, so that we can have dialogue. So Hebrews chapter 10, verse 19, and it reads, family, it says this. It says, therefore, brothers, since we have confidence to enter the holy places by the blood of Jesus, since we have confidence, underline that if you're taking notes with us this morning, because I, I want to walk this out. I want to set us up for incredible home stretch this week. It, it says, since we have confidence that it is, it's not confidence that, it, that my, my confidence, come on, my, my, my confidence, hear this, my confidence is not the results of my accomplishments. Hear me, hear me today. My, my confidence is not based on my works. My, my confidence is not based on my achieve, achievements in life. It's not based on how many plaques or degrees I have on a wall. My, my confidence is not based on who I'm connected to. My, my confidence, here, those are beautiful things. Those are things that we go, um, go out, go after in life. But what the writer is saying here, th this confidence is, is, is because of the blood of Jesus. This confidence is this confidence. Is, and, and to be honest, family, let me teach you this way. And this is why I want to take my time because I really think this is going to help, help a lot of us out. The question is, is not how much confidence you have. The, the question really is, what are you putting your confidence in? Let me say that again. Let me say that again. The question is, because a lot of it, if I can just get more confidence, if I can get more boldness, if I, and a lot of times we begin to quantify a lot of things. Like if I had more, no, you don't need more confidence. You need to put your confidence in God, whatever you have, put it in him. And I'm telling you right now, if you need more confidence to, to, to move into everything, and God is saying, you don't need more confidence, give me what you have right now. Come on, somebody. Give me the little bit. I would take the little bit that you have, put it in Jesus, and watch what Jesus is getting ready to do. So your confidence, let's go back to the text. Your confidence is not based on self. Your confidence is based on the blood. Your confidence is not based on your mind or your ability. Your confidence is based on that he saved you by his blood. And now you have already entered into a beautiful relationship. And through that beautiful relationship, you're now able to accomplish and defeat anything that Jesus walks in your journey. Are you walking with me? This is why when we walk with, with, with low self-esteem, we have to be reminded, no, he loves us so much that he came to save us, not condemn us. And he loves us so much that he sacrificed himself. This is our confidence. Now we begin to build our confidence up, but we put our confidence not in us or things. We put our confidence in him. This is the beautiful thing. And it said, this is no hesitation. And this is why I say we, we have confidence to, to, to enter into the holy place. This is where we were making the connection. This is what the writer is, is teaching us here. He's, he's talking about the holy place back in the tabernacle. Well, well with Jesus, and we're, gonna, we're, gonna, we're setting up the text, you have confidence to enter into this relationship. You have confidence to stay in his presence. There's no hesitation. And the beautiful thing, well, not the beautiful thing, thank you, thank you, God, it's not a beautiful thing. Here's what the hesitation is. The enemy always wants to keep you in a space where you feel like you, you're not supposed to enter in. The enemy is always looking to put, and we're going to break this down in a little bit, he wants to put the curtain. 
And and this is the veil that we're getting ready to talk about. Come on, we 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 unpacked it yesterday. The veil is torn. Let them rip. Yeah, yeah, put that in the chat. Let them rip. And, and yes, the ultimate veil is ripped already, but the enemy loves to put other veils in our life, other curtains in our life. The veil was a barrier so that they could not cross over and fully into his presence. So now the enemy understands this, so he loves to put barriers in front of us. Maybe you're walking through a season of low self-esteem. That's a barrier. That's a curtain. Maybe you're walking through a season where you're not, you don't feel insecure. That's a barrier. Or maybe you're walking through a season where it, it's really hard to trust God in some things. So your 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 control, your your grip and the sternum will so tight, and it's, you don't. And God is saying, "No, let go, let go, let 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 me drive it, let me drive it." And you're you're want to be in full control. That's a barrier. And and the writer here is saying, "No, there's no hesitation." Walk into his presence. Walk into the holy place. Are you walking with me, family? Verse number 20. It says, by the new. Come on. By the new and living way. We understand there was an old way. That's why we're breaking down the tabernacle. There was an old way, but by, by, by the sacrifice of Jesus Christ, there is a new way. By the new and living way that he opened through, excuse me, that he opened for us through, come on, the curtain. There we go. That is through his flesh. And since we have a great priest, come on, receive that today. R remind yourself of that today. You are royalty. You are a priesthood, but we have a high priest. Come on. You have a high priest. Come on. You are part of a peculiar people. You are royal you nation. Come on. Can I give you the, can I give you Peter real quick? Come on. Be reminded of who you are, but re be reminded of who you're connected to. You are connected to a high priest who's over the house of God. He's over your life. He's over our church. Come on. He's over everything that God, that God is doing in your life. You have a high priest that's interceding for you daily, and he's on over, excuse me, he's over the house. Come on. Jesus cleared the way by the blood of his sacrifice. He's, he, he's the priest that, that went before God. He's the high priest. And just as I broke down, they just said they talked about the curtain. And, 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 and it goes into verse 22. Here we go. Here we go. We didn't get the opportunity really to break all of this down yesterday. So this is why I'm taking my time to set, set our moment up. Hopefully this is impactful for a lot of us. It says, let us draw near with a true heart and full assurance of faith with our hearts sprinkled clean from an evil conscience and our bodies washed with pure water. Mm. Verse 23, let us hold fast. Yeah, here we go. Let us hold fast the confession of our hope without wavering. For he who promised is faithful. Mm. Let us keep a firm grip on the promises that keeps us going. Are you hearing me, family? Let us keep a firm grip on the promises. So, so whatever you are gripping in this season is the thing that's going to have you. Whatever you're holding on to is the thing that's going to drive your life. Whatever you're, 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 you're get putting in, whatever you're gripping, let me say it again. So if you're gripping, if you're gripping him, God has you. If, if, if you're gripping negative thoughts, Constantly, negative thoughts are going to have you. This is why we're carving out this time in the morning. And this is why, because we want to we wanna live a Matthew 6.33. Come on, we want to seek him first. Because we understand that we don't seek him first. There's things in our life today that's looking, that's waiting to grab us. That's waiting to, to get our attention. That, that's waiting to trip us up. That, that's waiting. It's, it's, it's waiting. It's like it's waiting on the sideline, licking his chops. And came, but this is why we have to set rhythms in our life, because if we lose the mornings, I'm telling you, sometimes if we lose the morning, we lose the day. Mm, that's a word for somebody right now. Sometimes when you lose the morning, you begin to lose the day. Your, your schedule is all messed up. Now, now, now you're trying to play catch up all day. And, and now you're frustrated and you're confused and, and you don't feel like you accomplish this thing. This is why rhythms and routines are important because we have to get a grip on what God wants to do in the moment, in the now, in the day. Are you walking with me, family? 
So this is why we 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 unpack this Hebrews text to connect it back to Exodus. And here, and this is why, because we were teaching on let them rip. It's a ripping season. And, and God is ripping some things to unpack some things. And we, we shared three points that God is doing this to expose you, excuse me, to expose you. He's doing this to clean you. He, he's doing this to heal you. Every pain you experience, hear me today, every pain you experience is purposeful. Mm. Every pain that you experience is pur purposeful. God, we're, we're God, not saying that God did it, we're not, not getting into that discussion. That's, a, that's between you and God. But what I do know with my relationship, God can allow, God can allow you to go through some trials to propel you beyond your self-imposed boundaries. Mm. So sometimes God has to allow us to go through some things because we have created boundaries around us. And maybe those boundaries are, are you've been playing it safe. So I, I, I have to I have to bring some scattering <laughs> in your life so so I can get you to move from this comfortable place so that I can begin to send you to another place. Come on. And so sometimes we, God has to do certain things in our life to get us moving. Mm, I, I, this is a word for somebody. This is why even after Jesus was crucified and, and, and the disciples went and camped out through, through fear and not knowing what was next and not uncertainty they were going through. So God had actually had to send persecution, come on, so that they won't play it safe, so that his word, his gospel can be released to all the nations and other parts of the world. If they were to just stay behind a door in a house that light cannot come out. And for some of us, Kimmy, let the ripping happen so that he can release your light. And sometimes God has us in a place and we're trying to like, God, is this you? And, and God, is this the enemy? And God is saying, what well, it doesn't matter. Just trust my process. Just trust that what I'm doing, I, I, I see you. Come on. Can I say this? I hear your prayers. God hears your prayers. Come on, my sister. I, I, I hear what God, God hears your prayers. God hears your prayers, my brother. And, and you're trying to figure it out. And God is saying, no, just let me, let me do what I do. Let me do what I do. Let me expose you. Mm. Let me clean you. Let me heal you. And we begin to hear and connect in the dot. So and I believe that God is speaking a word on your home stretch right now. And as I get ready to, to, to land the plane a little bit here and get ready to open up the room, I, 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 I pray that Hebrews reminds you of your position in life. I pray that Hebrews brings you back to a place of understanding that, that you belong, right? We, we, we're not worthy of it. But God sees something beautiful inside of you that, that he sent his, his only begotten son so that he can draw closer to you. We're not worthy of his presence, but you're worthy to go beyond that boundary that keeps trying to separate you from God. And God is saying that the veil is torn. Let me come in and let me do the ripping. Let me do the cleaning. Let me do the exposing because better is here. Better is here. And that's what God is speaking to you today.